Hey, welcome back to another Pragmatic Works YouTube video. My name is Nate Hallowell, and today we're talking all about populating our lookup columns in our Dataverse data flows. So let's jump right in. All right, so jumping right into the solution that I have set up for this demo, we've got a simple solution right now with two tables, one table for our school, and one table for our teachers. Our teachers all have a lookup column to our school. So if we go and we look at the different columns, I'm gonna just filter by my publisher prefix, and we see we have the email address, the name, the school, and the teacher, that's the unique identifier. So these three fields are the ones that we really care about, the email, the name, and the school. Primarily, we care about this school column. This is our lookup column that looks up to our school table. So if we go over to our school table and we look at the columns, we'll see that we have just two columns here. We have the school name and we have another field here called the SQL ID. So in our example today, we're gonna to be working with this Excel spreadsheet just size this down a little bit. And we have two tables in this Excel sheet. First is we have our teacher export from SQL. We've got the name of the teacher, the email address, and the school that they are a part of. And that school has a number, one, two, and three. If we go over to our schools, here's our different schools. We have Power Platform University, Azure Academy, and College of Power BI. All of them have an ID here. So what we're gonna be doing is creating one data flow to populate both of these tables in Dataverse and populate that lookup column in the teacher table. So let's look at how to do that. The first and most important step is that any table you look up to in a data flow, that table needs to have an alternate key on it. So to create that alternate key, let's go over to the school table. That's the table that the teacher table looks up to. So we're gonna go over to our school table. We're gonna go up to new we're gonna add a new key. For this, I'm just gonna call it school ID key. And which field is going to represent that key? That is gonna be our school SQL ID. Now, if you already have a table and it already has data in it, this is very important. Make sure that whatever column you're selecting for your alternate key, that column cannot have any duplicate values in any of the rows. So if you try to create that key and it fails, that will be your reason. So go ahead and save this key. And when we create an alternate key on a Dataverse table, what that does is it actually kicks off a system job in the background, an asynchronous process that is going to go and create that foreign key for this table. So before we can write our data flow, we actually need to make sure that that job has processed and that that key is active. So to check the status of your key from this view in our solution, we can go over to keys and we can see all of the different keys that we've set up for this table. And we'll see that the school ID key, the status is pending. So that system job is currently running in the background. So I'm gonna give it another minute here and I'm gonna refresh and I'll come back as soon as that key is active. So now that our key is active, you see active right here on the status, now we're ready to actually create our data flow. So what we want to happen is we want to create one data flow that simultaneously populates our school table with all of our schools, and then populates our teacher table with all of the teachers, and it's going to populate that lookup column. So to do that, let's go outside of our solution Go to more on the left hand side. Let's go to data flows. And now let's do a new data flow. For this, I'm just going to call this data flow demo and then create. So the first step is to select your source data. I'm going to choose an Excel worksheet and I'm going to browse my OneDrive. And I've just got that Excel sheet stored right on my OneDrive, teacher data flow. Click next. And now we have to select the worksheets that we wanna bring in from that file. So I'm gonna select both the schools and the teachers. 
click transform data. Now that we've got our Power Query Editor open, this next part is extremely important. So right now, because in my Excel worksheet or workbook, in my Excel file, I have the teachers first and the schools second. And if I go down to my queries, it's reading those worksheets in order. I've got the teachers and the schools. For this to properly work and to populate our lookup columns, we have to first populate our lookup tables before anything else. If I was to click next right now, it's going to populate these tables in order of the queries. So because I'm looking up to the school table, I need to move this query up before the teacher query. So now that I've got the lookup table first and then our table, let's click next. And now we can start mapping our fields. So because I'm loading to an existing table that I already have, first I have to select a table and this is sorted by your publisher. So I need to go down to DFLU and this is the school table. And now I just simply map my two fields. So we have the school name going to the school field in the Excel book and we have the school ID is gonna go to the ID from Excel. Next, go ahead and do the same thing with the teacher table. And we're gonna to load to an existing table. Go down and find our teacher table. And now because we have an alternate key on our lookup table, the school table, you'll see that it's available in our mapping. If we did not add that alternate key, you would not see the lookup column listed here. So now again, just map your columns, the email going to the email, the name going to the name. And then this is our lookup column. This will be our school. So school going to school SQL ID. That's gonna populate our lookup. Now go ahead and click publish. We'll see that it's now publishing. It's now published and now it's refreshing our data. So we'll give that a second to run and then we'll go check our tables. All right, and it says it successfully refreshed our data. So let's go take a look at our tables. Go to tables, I'm gonna search for school. And we've got Azure Academy, College of Power BI and Power Platform University and their school IDs. So now here's the, the real test. Let's go back to tables and I'm gonna search for my teacher table. And success, we've got all of our teachers in here and we've got all of our schools. So there you have it, very simple. A couple key things to take away from this video. Make sure that if you have a data flow populating multiple tables in one data flow, that all of your lookup columns are listed first in your queries. You wanna populate those lookup tables before you populate your main table. Secondly, make sure that your lookup tables all have an alternate key and that that alternate key is set to active. If you do both of those things, you're gonna have no trouble and you're gonna be able to map your lookup columns and your Dataverse data flows. Hopefully this video was helpful and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.